Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the third video in a series on solutions to our formula challenge. So again, our challenge was to write a formula to return the name of the salesperson that made the first sale in each month out of the year based on this table of sales data over here and this date column. And in this video, we're going to look at how to use the aggregate function to solve this problem. And I should mention that the aggregate function for this particular solution is it's not an array formula. So we do not need to use control shift enter to enter this formula, as you'll see. And I'll explain some of the benefits of that throughout this video. So you can download this file here that I'm using, and I'll put a link to that below the video in the description so you can follow along. So let's go ahead and take a look at the aggregate function. So the aggregate function is really going to do the same job here as the min if array function did for us in the previous videos, which is return that minimum date or that oldest date for each month of the year. And here's the aggregate function here. And I'll explain how this works. Before I do that, I also want to mention that aggregate was introduced in Excel 2010. And so as long as you and your users are on Excel 2010 or later, or Excel 2011 and later for the Mac, as long as you and your users are on either of those versions, you will be able to use the aggregate function. And it's a great function to know. It's similar to the subtotal function, if you've ever used that before before, allowing us to do different calculation types. However, it has some additional options that make it even more powerful and awesome. So let's take a look at this aggregate function. And here it is written out here. And we'll just step through it. So the first thing we have here with the aggregate function, the first argument is the function number. And if you're typing it out, you'll see this drop down. If not, just hold the Alt key and press the down arrow. And you'll see the different functions here that we can choose from for aggregate. So we can do all these different calculation types. Now we have a min function right here, but we're actually going to choose the small function for this, which is function number 15. And that's because the small handles an array and we want to handle an array. Uh, the min function does not do that with aggregate, but fortunately the small function does. And I'll explain more about that, but we're going to use the small function and that just returns the smallest result from an array. And so we'll choose 15 here, we'll specify 15. Now the next argument is the options. Again, if you hit Alt down arrow, we'll see a list of different options here. And these are different things we can ignore within the calculation. So we can ignore other subtotal functions or aggregate functions for the range that we specify, the range we want to calculate on. We can ignore hidden rows, error values, a combination of all these different things. We can ignore nothing uh, or just singular items. And in here, we're going to choose to ignore error values. So we're going to choose number six. And I'll explain why in just a minute as we step through the actual array here. So we'll choose six. And then next we have the array. And this is the calculation and kind of the magic here within this formula. And so what this is doing is it's taking our date column in our sales table here, and it's dividing it by this uh, logical statement right here, which is the month number for each date in the column and setting that equal to our month number that we're evaluating, which is month one over here. And so it's doing a comparison there for each value, because again, this is going to evaluate as an array for each value. It's doing that comparison and it's going to return a true or a false. It's also important to note that that needs to be wrapped in parentheses there. So you see right after the divide sign, we have an open parentheses and then a close parentheses. So that'll evaluate first uh, before we do the division. And an easier way to see what's going on here is if we step into the evaluate formula window. So I'm just going to hit escape for now. And again, select that cell that contains the formula, go to the formulas tab, and then open the evaluate formula window. Keyboard shortcut is Alt T U F. So here's our formula here. And again, we can just step through this like we did in the previous videos. So I'll just hit spacebar to evaluate that. That's going to return all of our dates. Unfortunately, this we can't make this window any bigger. So a lot of times we have to kind of scroll down here to see what's going on at the bottom of this. Hit spacebar again there. That'll continue to evaluate our dates there. And then it's going to do the comparison with the month numbers. We scroll down again. We'll evaluate the month number we're comparing it to. I'll hit spacebar again a few more times. 
and then these numbers are going to evaluate here, and now you can see we get these divide by zero errors. So what's happening here is the math is going on in the formula where we're taking our date and dividing it by either a true or a false value. And those true and false values, those Boolean values, evaluate to either a one and a zero in Excel, either a one or a zero. So in this case here, we could say that we're taking the date and then dividing it by a zero because the month of that date does not equal the month of the number we're evaluating over here. So we get all these divide by zero errors in this array, but you can also see down here we also get some dates, and these will be all the dates that are in January in the first month. So if we scroll through that, you'll eventually see some more dates here, and these are all the dates for January. So then what's happening is aggregate is then going to, the next step is it's going to do the small function there or find the smallest value in that array. And since we specified number six here in those options to ignore any errors, it's going to ignore all the divide by zero errors and only account for any values that are left over. So we'll hit spacebar again and we'll see we get our date returned right there. And again, that'll be the first date for the month of January. So some pretty tricky stuff going on there with that formula to do that division and those divide by zero errors and handle that. But it's a great solution here uh, with the aggregate function because we don't need to use control shift enter for this. This is not entered as an array function. We just enter this normally so we don't have to worry about any confusion around control shift enter. When you enter this function, just hit enter on the keyboard. And that'll enter as a normal function. And then another added bonus here uh, that I forgot to mention, if we jump back into the formula, the last argument out here in the function is this k. And for the small function, we can see this is an optional function because it has these square brackets around it. Uh, but this is an optional function for the small function, which allows us to return the number of of rank that we want to return. So if we change this to two instead of one, right now it's one because it'll return the first or the smallest value. If we weren't wanted to return the second smallest value, we could change this to two, hit enter, and that'll return the second date in the month here. So this would be great if we wanted to reward the first, second, and third place salespeople uh, for the month, we can then just expand out our formula here to include the one, two, and three for that K argument there. So I'll change it back to one for now because we do just want first place, but it's good to know that we have that option with aggregate. So it makes it a little more flexible and dynamic there. And then finally, we are just putting that aggregate function in the VLOOKUP here. So we're just using it in a VLOOKUP or in an index match as the lookup value. Again, it's going to return that date. This is stored as a number, a decimal number, but really when we format it, we can format it as a date and it'll look up that date in this column here and then just return the salesperson from the second column. So I think because of its flexibility and also because of the fact that we don't have to enter aggregate as an array function, I think it's the winner here for our challenge. It's not the most popular because a lot of people still don't know about this function, uh, but it is very versatile and it's a great function to use. So hopefully you gathered some new knowledge out of this training on aggregate and you start using it. Of course, it can be a lot more simple than this. This was kind of a more advanced formula with dividing by and then evaluating this logic on the denominator there. But it's just great to know that we can use this for more advanced scenarios like a min if. We can even use it to evaluate multiple criteria and I'll create a separate video that explains how to do that. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the new min ifs function. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.